How's it going, Otters? Just hanging out here in the pasture with my sheeps and my goats. Nah. But uh, what I come, what I want to do with you guys today is we're going over. We're gonna go over two different vowel combinations. All right. We're gonna be talking about O A and E A. Right? They're vowel combinations because they're two vowels that go together and make a single sound. Now, looking over here on this side, there's a similarity between these letter combinations. And that is, all those combinations with O all make the same sound when you see them in words. I should say they always make that sound. But sometimes they all make the same sound in words. <clears throat> they all make the long O sound called O. So today we're going to focus on OA, which makes the O sound in the middle of a word. You'll never see OA at the end of the word. It'll never make that sound. But when it's in the middle of the word, it always makes the O sound like goat. Goat is spelled G O A T. All right? The second sound we're going to focus on is E-A, that you see over here on this other side. All right? A bunch of different letter combinations. They all make the same sound, all right? Y, E-Y, I-E, E-I, E-E, E-A. Sometimes Y makes an I sound, but sometimes it also makes an E sound. Sometimes E-A makes an S sound, as in red, but today we're going to talk about the long E sound that it makes, E. So when you hear E in the word, you're going to use E-A. When you hear O in the word that I give you, it's going to be O-A. All right? So the four words. Four words we're going to spell today. All right? Word number one is cockroach. The cockroach was found in the house eating the wood. All right? couple of... Spelling rules that we've viewed in that word right there. So it's two words put together. Cockroach. It's a compound word. Let's see if you can figure out how to spell cockroach. The next word is float. All right. He, he will float down the river. Float. Next word is croak. The frog will croak in the evening to tell all the other frogs it's there. All right. The last word is beast. Look at this beast of a sheep right next to me. Beast. All right. Those are the four words. Now, the next part of today's lesson. I wanted to talk about the almighty colon. Not the colon. Where all your feces is stored inside your body, but the colon that we use in sentences. Sometimes you see colons used in time. When I give you a time, such as 1230, we put a colon, which is like two periods stacked on top of each other. We put a colon in between the numbers 12 and 30. When I give you a time, 1230. We see colons used in ratios in math. Okay, so when I say like a ratio of three to five, that's equal to three fifths. All right, on the bottom there, that's where we see colons. In writing, the way we use colons is when to signify to the readers of when we're going to see a list of three or more things. Now, if you had just a list of three things in a sentence, you could just use commas, such as I went to the store and bought bread, milk, and orange juice. Okay, I would use commas to separate all those things. But if I have a longer list of things, if I have a longer, like, oh, it's coming up here, it's going to be the following a super long list, it'd be more appropriate to use a comma. So I'm going to give you, or I'm sorry, not a comma, but a colon. And then we split everything using commas, okay? So a colon, I'm going to repeat it again, is to signify that we're going to be discussing a list of things, of actions, of nouns, of adjectives. But here's my example here. So I want you to do the best you can with a colon, all right? So here it is. The animals she wanted to study include the following. 
and then that's where I put my colon. Include the following. Now the reader knows I'm going to be saying a list of things. Rabbits, comma. Monkeys, comma. Pandas, comma. Frogs, comma. Goats, comma. And teachers, period. Okay, we always still put a period at the end of the sentence. But notice I put a colon after the word following. Okay, you could say, you could use words like the preceding, the preceding, the, um, the words below. All right, it's basically this punctuation mark that tells me, oh, you're, after this little part, you're going to see a list of things and that's what you should look for. Okay, so here's an example again. I'll show it to you closer on the screen so you can see it. The animals she wanted to study include the following. And there's my colon right there. Rabbits, monkeys, pandas, frogs, goats, and teachers. And I always put a period at the end of my sentence. Can you see my period or do I erase it? I'm going to put it again just to emphasize. There needs to be a period. There also needs to be a capital letter. Okay, right there. Got it? See that? I want you to give that a shot. I want you to write one sentence using a colon. Give it your best shot. No, I don't want to see times. I don't want to see ratios. I want to see it in use as if I'm going to introduce a list. Okay, so your sentence should be a sentence about a list and then give me the list using a colon in the correct way. If there are any questions, I am available over email on Teams. Whichever you prefer, okay? Give me a call if you have any questions. I'm going to give you those words again to spell. The first word was cockroach. The second word is float. The third word is croak. The fourth word is beast. And always with spelling, give your best shot. All right? Spell it. Try and spell it the first time. And then if you don't get it right, well, look it up. It's okay. All right? Be willing to make mistakes. Guys, have a great Monday. Have a great week. See ya.